Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue talking about sound waves. But in this section, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into it and really talk about the mechanics of how the air molecules or whatever you're talking about, your medium, how they are oscillating. And we're going to write down some equations that talk about that oscillation. We're going to talk about how those things propagate. And you'll find out that the form of a sound wave really looks just like the form of all the other waves that we've talked about uh, so far with some minor differences. And then we'll get into talking about constructive and destructive interference when it comes to sound waves. So it's very uh, much a parallel of what we've covered in the previous section with transverse waves, uh, except now we're going to be talking about the thing that you've dealt with every day of your life, which are sound waves. So remember, sound wave is a longitudinal wave. We talked about that in the last section and a few sections before. And that just means that as my vocal cords vibrate or as your speakers vibrate, they're literally pushing on the air back and forth. And so if you could see the air right here, if you could actually see all of the air, what would be happening is I'm, I'm pushing the molecules closer to one another, and then that sort of causes a disturbance in that, that, that clump of air molecules that kind of get pushed together end up propagating off that way, and eventually that high pressure region there hits my eardrum, and then that causes my eardrum to vibrate too. So when you do this with your, either your vocal cords or a speaker or whatever, anything, uh, clapping your hands together, it's just a ripple through the air molecules that then collide and bounce off one another and just send the energy on um, through space. So what we're going to do is, is build a better understanding of that model in this lecture here. So what we're going to have is, in general, you might think of air molecules as little ping pong balls. Now, of course, in real life, when you get to more advanced physics than, than uh, introductory physics in uh, high school or college, you'll find out that um, atoms and molecules are much, much weirder and more interesting than ping pong ball model. And ping pong ball model is just not reality. Even though we're all taught that as an early age, that atoms and molecules are these little marbles and they hit each other. It's really a lot more complicated than that. But for this uh, purpose, in this section, you can sort of think of them as ping pong balls because it aids you in your um, understanding. But when you get into quantum mechanics and some additional courses beyond this, you'll find out that atoms are really not these hard balls that you've kind of come to know and love. They're they're much, uh, let's just put it this way, nature is much more interesting than that, okay? So what you have is these little, these little balls we'll visualize. And of course, they're everywhere in space. Every single direction, there's trillions of them, and they're very, very close together. So if I were to thump one of these things, he would go and collide with this guy, and then he would collide with this guy, and he would collide with this guy. And eventually, I mean, eventually it would fade out, but it would ripple this propagation through um, through the air, and, or through the water, or through whatever the sound is uh, traveling through. So if I had some molecules over here that my vocal cords are vibrating, or I'm clapping my hands over here or whatever, then you know I might see one guy move over here, and then I may have one guy over here, and then maybe I have one guy bouncing back, maybe one guy bouncing back over here. But basically as I were to move my hand here, maybe these guys are moving forward and causing some collisions here. Maybe some of these are moving backwards from another disturbance over here. So this is a fluid that my hands are in and as I speak these little molecules are then causing the next guy to move, the next guy to move. And eventually the forces are going to want to pull them back the other direction and maybe they'll come back the other direction. So everything is almost like um, you know, a, a marble on a string. I mean, these molecules are, they're free to float in the air, but they're colliding with one another. And there's also electrostatic um, attraction and repulsion going on there too. So there's, a, you know, atomic forces that are causing them to want to move back to their original position. So as I displace one of them, eventually I may clump them together into a little high pressure region that propagates this way. And then this molecule may want to move back to its neutral position, just like the swing set. I push a swing set, he's going to want to come back to his, his neutral position. I keep pushing him and pushing him and pushing him. He wants to come back. Well, if I have a disturbance in the air, I'm going to push this molecule this way and maybe a few trillion additional molecules this way, and I create a little high pressure region right here, and they collide to, against the adjacent molecules. But as soon as they start to do that, you know, you kind of leave a little vacuum over here because they've moved out of the way, and so these guys are going to want to come right back to where they started. So as you push the molecule, he wants to come back to his original position. But you see, he's already collided with the next one, which transmits the energy that way. This guy, in turn, wants to move a little bit farther this way, but as soon as he does, 
he wants to move back to his original position because again he's sort of created a little mini vacuum here he wants to move back to his original position but again he's collided into the adjacent one so as you create a sound wave what you're really doing is one molecule is forced to move from its normal you know, equilibrium position and he collides, so to speak, with the adjacent guy. But basically, as soon as that happens, he wants to come back to his original position, more or less. And every molecule wants to do that. So each individual molecule, this is very important, so pay attention to this part. Each individual molecule basically oscillates around its equilibrium position. Okay, that's very important for you to understand. Here's a molecule at the tip of this pen. Okay, if I thump it, he's going to move this way, but this is not empty space. This is full of air. So as soon as he moves, he's going to collide with another one and generally bounce back. But even if he doesn't necessarily bounce back, if I move a trillion molecules this direction, I'm going to leave a little pocket of, of less air right here.